Good afternoon. I'm uh, Kevin Shoemaker, and like Jim mentioned, I work for Canadian Natural. I do mine planning, and as a as a hobby, I took up Python programming. So I'm going to show uh, some possibilities how to actually enhance MindSight uh, with the use of Python scripts. So first, I'm going to my agenda. I'm going to Talk about who Canadian Nashville is, just a couple of brief slides. Mindsight and Python. And then I get into creating scripts. Now the scripts do get into coding, but I do have some videos showing uh, the scripts in action and it shows the, the power of Python with Mindsight uh, to create your own tools that you need for your, your end user. Who is Canadian Nashville? We're a Canadian oil and gas company. We're also one of the new operational oil sands facilities in northern Alberta. Our mine is a truck and shovel operation. We mine the oil sand and deliver the ore to our extraction plant. We have full upgrading facilities on site. So the plant extracts the bitumen out of the oil sand and refines the bitumen into synthetic crude oil. All right, now it's time to get down to business. Mindsight and Python. Mintech has provided us the tools that allow us to write programs to do what we want inside Mindsight. You can write a script for those repetitive tasks and more. The Grail libraries allow you to use the core functionality of Mindsight in your scripts, and using other Python libraries, you can create some really unique tools for your needs. The reasons to use Python with Mindsight, it simplifies tasks, it saves time for the user, there's no more clicking mouse buttons, checking, picking surfaces here and there, and it can reduce time. So first I'm going to talk about repetitive tasks in Mindsight. Time consuming tasks are when the user needs to do something. Selecting surfaces, clicking a button here and there, making new geometry objects, and when you repeat those time-consuming tasks, it's time to write a script. Here's an example I'm going to use over the next few slides. Creating overburden and ore solids based on the end of period pit shells. The workflow of the script is something like this. First, we get the objects. Next, we sort the objects into the categories we need. Then we execute run once tasks. And finally, we loop through the sorted objects performing the required tasks to get the end result we need. This is the brief explanation of the manual method for doing this. You'd have to create a total ore solid, save the result to a new geometry object. Create a cut solid between your two end of period surfaces and save that result to, an end, to a new geometry object. Next, we intersect the two solids to get both an ore solid and also to intersect and get the overburden solid. We repeat this process for as many end of period shells you have. So to start using Python, you have to bring the, the objects into Mindsight or into, into the script. And the easiest way to do this is with the data manager module. You basically just highlight the objects in, in the data manager and run the script. A simple command brings all the highlighted objects into the script. Then with a quick loop through the selected objects, you can sort the objects you need into the different categories. In this example, I'm finding my ORT1 surface and moving it to my OR top variable. And any objects with a dash P in the file name, I move to my end of period surface list. Now we get to use some Grail modules to uh, using the OR top surface to create a total OR solid so I can use the OR or the solid intersection tool in the future. First, I retrieve the surface information, points and faces of the OR top. Then I get the limits of this, the surface and create a zero elevation surface. And I create an OR solid using the Grail engine surface intersection tool to create your cut solid. And this result is saved to a variable so we can use it later. With the main loop, I loop through 
all the selected end of period surfaces. Naming of the geometry objects is critical. You want it to be in chronological order or you have to sort the objects. First, we get the surface data of the first and second of this first end of period surface, then the second end of period surface. The script creates a new geometry object for you. Continuing on, I use the Grail engine surface intersection tool to create a cut solid between the first and second end of period surface. This result is saved to a geometry object. Next, I intersect the total excavation solid, my cut result from the previous operation, against the total ore solid to get the difference between the two solids and the result is my overburden solid for the period. Then the result is saved to a geometry object. I repeat the intersect solid command, but this time we get the ore solid. After, after the object is saved to the geometry object, the process loops through all the selected surfaces. So during the first, it uses the first and second in the list. The next loop, it uses second and third, and so on. Once the loop is finished, it closes all geometry objects and it refreshes the current folder in the data manager. And this is the end result. The naming convention will always be the same. No more creating scripts and making them edit objects. No more manually selecting surfaces and dialog boxes. The script does all the work. You highlight the required files, you run the script, and you go for a copy. Here's another example of how, how to automate repetitive work. This time I'm using an LGO exported to a geometry object and the dike target shells of various material zones for the dike. The script creates a total fill solid between the LGO surface and the dike's target. And it intersects that solid against all the zone materials. Once the inter intersected zone solid is created, it creates partials for the solid and calculates the volume from the partials file. The results are saved to a CSV, and then it continues on with the loop through the remaining dike target shells. When complete, the script automatically opens up the CSV with the volumes. At Horizon, we also use Python inside multi, uh, Compass multi-runs. This gives you the ability to run a, a multi-run on demand inside another multi-run. In my inventory calculation multi-run, I run a Python script that up, updates the restriction code item in the block model when needed. We don't always need to update the restriction code, so it only runs when I pass a variable through the, to the script. I check the variable being passed to the script, if it's greater than zero, I update the variables inside the multi-run response and run the multi-run. Another use of Python and Compass, uh, we rebuild our GSM weekly based on the latest topography. Using Python, you can simplify the workflow so no user has to open Compass files or multi-runs. First, we ask the user if they graded a surface item, a surface into an item. Next, the script asks the user for a folder containing the model. It checks to make sure both project files exist. In the block model project, it runs a multi-run to dump data for the GSM. After the data is complete, it runs, um, it runs a, the GSM rebuild multi-run in the GSM project. You can also copy files with Python. And since I already have a diluted GSM in my PCF, but I need to redilute the new model, so now I just copy the GSM model over top my diluted, and I run one more multi-run. This is automatic. Once the surface is gridded and the folder is selected, the user just needs to wait for the procedure to finish. Now I'm gonna talk about other Python libraries and powerful tools you can make. The next few slides show some more advanced uses of Python and MindSight, interacting with Windows using the Windows 32 API. With Python, you can interact with Microsoft Outlook and you can automatically attach files to an Outlook message. Just highlight the objects in the data manager and run a script. 
Since we can obtain the full path of the file with the data manager module, it's as easy as this video to email geometry objects. Just like sending emails, you can retrieve emails from Outlook 2. I have two scripts that read emails. One searches for the last email received with MindSight attachments and saves them into the folder of your choice. The other script reads the user's emails and completes and compiles a list of messages and allows the user to select the email they want to save. With the data manager module, you can either, you can get the path of the folder by highlighting the geometry object and trimming the object name off the physical path, or if nothing is selected, you can ask the user if they want, or what folder they want to save the objects in. OS.start file. This is a standard function that allows Python to open any file on your system. Using this command, it's equivalent to double-clicking on the file in Windows Explorer. I wrote two scripts that work together to launch any application or file from within MindSight. The first script creates a launch MSR file, which is only a geometry object with a text element containing the full path to a file. The second script verifies the object as a launch MSR file and uses the OS start file command to open the path stored in the geometry object. Using the Python imaging library, you can do image processing. If you ever textured a surface in MindSight, you know that if the image is larger than 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, you get an error matches message about rendering in software and not being very efficient with memory. I noticed that the Python imaging library is included with the MindSight installation, so I wrote a script that automatically tiles a JPEG image to less than 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. Plus, I have it create the tiles in MindSight. It doesn't apply the texture to the surface, but that's easily enough to do. Another Python imaging library script I created will resize an image based on pixel resolution. Another use of Python is you can automate retri file retrieval from the network. My survey department places a new LGO in a folder every week, and when we need to update our LGO, I just run a script. It finds all folders with field surveys in the name and sorts them. Then it gets the folder contents of the weekly LGO folder inside that survey folder. My surveyors always prefix the, the name with the date, so I start the list, make sure it's in order, and I grab that, the latest file, and if it exists on the local system, I don't copy it, because it's already there, and if it doesn't exist, copy the file. Another thing you can do with Python is you can convert PNGs to PDFs. You can convert any image to a PDF. When printing to a PDF inside MindSight, uh, Depending on the size of your plot, it can really create large PDFs and it prints every element separately. So I've switched to printing to PNGs, but sometimes I need to convert to PDFs for government agencies or for reports. So using the report lab library, you can convert an image to a PDF. The script I create, created asks the user for a folder. It, list, it gets a list of the files and if the file is a PNG, it loads the image, checks orientation and page size, and saves the image to a PDF. When finished going through the list of files, it opens Windows Explorer to the folder. The end result is the same as the PDF, but, or same as the PNG, but as a PDF. The last use of Python I'm gonna speak about today is using the OSWalk function. A standard function within Python to get the file names of a directory tree. With this function, you can create a tool to search the data manager. My MindSight project is huge. Every year I work on 100 projects. I do miscellaneous planning, and pretty much I'm the go-to guy for pretty much all miscellaneous work. So when you have to hunt for something that you worked on in the past, it's a lot of opening and closing a folder trying to track down exactly what you're looking for. To simplify this process, I made a script that searches the data manager a simple GUI interface that takes a string and searches that through all the file names and also defined by a date modified time period. The user interface also allows the object to be opened and displayed and displays the contents of the object in the viewer. 
The script searches for all mine site objects. Uh, so it can locate legends, plot layouts, etc. It just can't open them. It's a limitation currently in Grail to only open geometry objects. Uh, my resources. I need to thank Mintech for having excellent Grail documentation and technical support. Many of my scripts were just cut and paste directly from the help documentation examples and modified to get the task I needed to get done. Google for helping me find what I needed to find. And fbot.org, a great reference for uh, creating GUI interfaces. Thank you for listening. Uh, I can answer some questions.